Um, we're excited you're here. If you're visiting here for the first time, we want to say amen, and it's good to have you. And we want you to know that uh, you're going to find out from today's message, maybe you didn't decide to come here, maybe it was decided for you to come here. So uh, I don't believe in coincidences, as you can see, and we're going to talk about that today in the message. Um, Pastor Ryan's uh, doing a time where he's uh, away, and he's uh, organizing, organizing things for the, for the year. And so I look forward to him coming back, but in the meantime, having rest and being able to think clearly about the future of the church and where we're headed and directions and all that stuff. So uh, God bless you all, and uh, it is very, very good to have you here this morning. Uh, with that in mind, if there's any announcements that aren't on the screen or aren't in the bulletin that, are be, that are need correction, if you have any of those, will you please uh, state them now? Any other things? Okay. Okay, I'm going to ask my brother over here, Eric, he's going to do the call to worship. Yes. So give your attention to Eric, and we're going to praise God together. Yes, we Amen. Are. Good morning, Red Oak Church. Good morning, Eric. The call of worship this morning is taken from Psalm 95, 1, 2. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us sing. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make joyful noise to him with songs and praise. Amen. Let's sing together. Ask God the Spirit to be with us this morning, please.
fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. said. You know, it says in the Bible that the Holy Spirit, I have the mic on, honey. Uh, it says in the, I think I'm on, am I on? Yeah. It says in the Bible that the Holy Spirit is part of worship, amen? You can't worship without the Spirit of God in you. The Holy Spirit is what enables us to worship in spirit and in truth, everyone. So when we say, you know, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, we could also say, Maranatha, come Holy Spirit and anoint our worship. Amen. Amen. And with that in mind, we are, we are going to sing a, a song. And I think it was by Jesus Culture wrote this song. And it's about the Holy Spirit. And may you think in your mind today as we worship God in spirit and in truth that God is listening. God is looking. 
And the, and the object of this message, the object of this sermon, the object of this worship service, the object of it at all is that God may say to us when the benediction is done, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen? Amen. Let us worship God and let us praise the Spirit of God.
So I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward and uh, as we're going to uh, be blessed and uh, we will receive the offering. So please come forward. Yeah. Great job. Great job. Let us give God our best gift this morning, amen? And sometime when you don't have money in your pocket, just give him yourself. Amen. God is so desiring to have a relationship with us. It does the Lord well when he sees us come into the house of worship and to extol his holy name. We are so thankful and grateful, Lord God, that you have blessed those to give on today for those that had a desire to give but could not. I ask you, Almighty God, for your word declared that you are the God that give increase. You are the God that gives seed to the swords, O oh God. Father, I pray, Father God, for these emblems that we have collected here today, that it would be used for the advancement of your kingdom, O oh God, that it may be used, Lord God, to the nourishment, Lord God, of the souls and, and the saints here at Red Oak, Lord God, that we may be a blessing unto them. Lord God, let all that is said and done uh, through these emblems, Lord God, be to your glory of your son, Jesus Christ. Father, we are forever indebted and grateful and thankful for salvation, Lord God, that you have brought unto us through Jesus Christ shed blood on Calvary's cross, Lord God. So all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. And junior worship, the March of the Light Brigade. Um, I want to mention one thing before we enter prayer. Um, Brother Eric over here was supposed to get some medicine last week, and um, it didn't. It didn't get here. So we're going to pray for. We're going to pray for Eric that it's coming on Tuesday, right, Eric? All right, Taco Tuesday or something like that. But <laughs> why am I always thinking of food? I have no idea. All right. with you. You'll eat tacos with me. All right, there we go. And so remember, uh, remember him in your prayers today. Um, I want you to pray for Pastor Ryan. Um, he, he's up in wherever he is. <laughs> I have. Does anybody know where he is? I have no idea. Vermont, thank you, I'm close. I'm in the same country. Anyway, and moving along. Uh, pray for him uh, as he gets some direction about the flow of the church during the course of the year. And he likes to take this time to be alone and to, well, he's, he's with his wife. He's not quite alone, but, you know, he's with his wife. And he needs this time to uh, reflect and get a perspective about the church. Amen? Amen. So pray for him. Cheryl, it's good to have you back. Cheryl, raise your hand. Cheryl has been away. You know, she's one of those snowbirds that went south for the winter. No, not really, but I don't know anybody who went south in the last recently. Do you? I don't know anybody. Yeah. But it's good to have you back, honey, okay? Anybody else with a special concern today, a special need in your heart? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to do something before we enter some time of silent prayer. It says, it says in the Bible, very clear on this, if you're wishy-washy about your faith, don't expect anything from God. Okay, God doesn't want us to be on and then off and then on and then off. Listen, faith 
pistis, it means trust. Trust your life with God. Trust your life with God as you go into prayer. You may not get what you want, but you will get what God gives you. And you'll learn to accept it by faith. Amen? Amen. So at this time, I'm going to ask you to enter into a time of silent prayer. And we're just going to reflect and during this time and also lift up prayers to God. Now, here's, the, here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to come to the church today with a sense of, I'm a sinner. The, the world over there, listen, the world out here doesn't believe in sin. But to come with repentance in your heart. Look, I've done things this, this week that I shouldn't have done. Or neglected to do the things that I should have done. Okay? I need to go before God and repent. I need, and repentance means to be sorry. Okay? To go to God with repentance. And then also, I want you to go to God with a sense of, even though I'm a sinner, God loves me and forgives me. That I need not be afraid. So remember that, and then after the assurance, I want you to do another thing. I want you to thank God for who he is to you. He's made a covenant with you, a New Testament covenant, by his blood and his death, we are saved. And then last of all, I'd like you to pray for others and yourself. Let this be a time of silence, but let it last for a few, okay? Let's go before God. You know, it's nice, isn't it, in a crazy, mixed-up world? Isn't it nice to find some silence? Where you got maybe 100 people here that are silent. Because it's in silence. You may hear a still, small voice speak into your heart. Let's go to God in prayer. Oh God, as we come to you in prayer today, we know that we're sinners. We haven't always done the right thing. So Lord, we confess it to you. There's times, as Paul says, when we say, oh wretched man that I am. But we come also, oh God, today that, know, that we know that the blood of Jesus Christ covers our sin. We never need to be afraid Oh God, you are merciful and you are gracious to us. As we come, oh God, we come to thank you for the cross of Jesus Christ. Moreover, we thank you, oh God, for the resurrection which tells us all things are possible with thee. That you're a great and mighty God. That you transcend even the laws of nature. Oh God, we put our faith and our trust in thee, for you are omnipotent, you are omniscient, and you are omnipresent. But, oh God, as we consider and as we thank you for our lives and what you've done for us, we also know that there are people among us who may be suffering. They may be dealing with grief. They may, may be dealing with heartache. They may be dealing with loss. So, oh God, we come together to pray for our brothers and sisters right here. That you would minister by the power of your spirit to them. And that they would find peace and comfort. We ask you, Lord God, to do miracles in our lives. We look forward to the testimony of your people that once again you've rescued us. Oh, loving God, we love you so much. And we pray, oh Lord, for our brothers and sisters. 
And as we close this prayer, oh God, we are remembering. Remembering that the people cried out to you, Lord Jesus, teach us how to pray. And so at this time and at this place, we repeat a prayer that you taught the masses 2,000 years ago. O oh Lord, O oh Father, hear our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Jim to come up here, and I'm going to ask him. I believe that when we go in the pulpit, whoever preaches the pulpit, in the pulpit, whoever preaches, they need prayer. They need prayer. Not only in the preparation of the message, but I need some prayer right now, okay? So, Brother Jim, I'm going to ask that you uh, pray for me, okay? Put your hand right on me, brother. There you go. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just praise you for this opportunity that we come and hear your word each week. Father, our hearts are open, our minds are open, and I just pray that uh, as Pastor Don speaks your word, may they be words from you, O Lord. May they touch our heart, touch our mind, and just bless him as he gives this word. And again, may these words be from you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Jim. Well, it's been a while since I've preached. I, think, I don't think I've forgotten how to do it. But Yes. <laughs> Eric said it was a few days ago. <laughs> um, I'm excited about today's message. I'm going to tell you that uh, it can be controversial in the sense that um, it is something that Christians have wrestled with forever, it seems. And um, so if, I want you to be clear about this, that if you differ with Pastor Don, it's okay. Brother, we're in a Baptist church. We're not a cult. The priesthood of all believers. You know, you go to the Word and God gives you a message. Okay, we're not a cult here. I don't want anybody worshiping any person here. We worship God and we worship Him only. Amen? Amen. So, I, I ask you to, um, to bear with me. I'm going to say things that come out of my Christian experience. And, uh, and I believe... God has given me this to speak and because I, I, I think you need to know and we all need to appreciate what God's providence really is. By the way, providence, on a side note, is a city that was named, a city that was, a, a place that was named by Roger Williams, our Baptist forefather, who got chased out of Plymouth. Can you imagine they came over for freedom of religion? So we, the Baptists come over in the 1600s, and what? They're kicked out. <laughs> Baptists have problems sometimes, you know? And they went to Narragansett Bay. You never guessed. They said, God took care of us. His providence is real. So we're going to name this place Providence. Providence, Rhode Island. And to this day, if you drive on 95, you'll see over on your left, as you head north on 95, you'll see a church there. It's the first Baptist church of America. The first Baptist church right there. And uh, so you, my point is you can differ. Okay, we're not a cult here. Providence means this. I'm going to break the word down for you. Pro means on behalf of. Videnz, from which we get the word video, to see, Okay. So God sees on our behalf, and he cares for us. That God is providential. He provides for his people. He provides for his creation. That God's workings are within all of history. That God is the alpha, and the omega, the beginning, the end. There is nothing that God and his sovereignty puts into that can't put into place. Because his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So today, I speak to you about 
providence. And I'm going to, before we even get in the scripture lesson, I hope you'll let me do a little acting for you. I did receive an Academy Award back in the 30s, but... <laughs> How many of you remember the movie Forrest Gump? Hi, my name is Forrest, Forrest Gump. Anybody see Forrest Gump? You raise your hands. Well, there's a scene in Forrest Gump that really touched my heart. And, and remember Forrest's wife is Jenny. Remember Jenny? And he goes, uh, he loved his Jenny, remember? And she died. And he's standing at the gravestone, or at the grave marker, underneath this tree where they sat. And Forrest stands before Jenny's grave. And he loses it emotionally. But as he's talking to Jenny, he says these words. Now, I don't know if we have a destiny or if we're all just kind of floating around, accidental-like, on a breeze. But I think maybe it's both. Maybe it's both. Maybe both are happening at the same time. What my message is about, brothers and sisters, is not Forrest Gump. What my message is about is the tension that happens between floating accidentally and decisions and God's immutable sovereignty and providential care of you, of you. I want you to leave today knowing that, that I'm in God's hands. Will you say that, please? Will you repeat it? Ready? One, two, three. I'm in God's hands. Again, I'm in God's hands. And now, Tiffany... Let your fingers do some walking, Tiffany. And let's go to our first scripture lesson. Oh, did you see that? <laughs> meant to be, meant to be. All right, now. Now watch this, everyone. The steps of a good man. Watch. Steps means this. I'm walking through life. I'm taking steps. Steps is your occasion of life. I'm... I, the steps of a good man, now good here is not necessarily mean, oh, he's a good guy. No, it means bigger than that. He's an obedient, he's obedient to the law, he's obedient to God, he has grace, he's precious, he's obedient, he's righteous. So the steps of the righteous or good man are, now watch this, ordered. If you have an order, you have an orderer. If you are given in the military an order, you have an orderer, sergeant, colonel, whoever. They're ordered. Ordered. The Greek word means to set up, to fix, to establish. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by who, everyone? Now, you might think it's you. We're going to get to that scripture coming up. They're ordered. God has established them. God has fixed them maybe a million years before you were born. How's them apples? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And listen to this, because this is very important. He delighteth, and I want to make sure I have this right. He delighteth, he delighteth in his way. That God looks at you and looks at your life and says, well done, good and faithful servant. And he delights. He finds pleasure because he's ordered the steps. The steps of the righteous are ordered. And you're following him? and he finds pleasure in you. Like that scripture? If you do, say amen. amen. Next. I like this one. Though he fall, he shall not utterly be cast down. I got to tell you a funny story. I'm going to divert for a little bit. I know those people who may be listening on the internet. Okay, I hope your pot roast isn't in the oven. Okay, watch. This is important. I went... I stayed at my daughter's, and she has a landing. She goes up about eight, ten steps. She has a landing. 
and then you, you, know, you go around it, and then you go up another eight, ten steps to the bedroom area? Well, you know, I, I said, I, I had, it was dark because I fell asleep. Ever fall asleep with a clicker in your hand? And, the, and what I love is the channels keep going. When I sleep, they go. They keep going, right? Every once in a while, they roll around. But watch this. I go up. I got my phone. I got, I got all my stuff ready for bed. I go up the stairs. I go up like this. Watch. And now I turn to go on the landing, but I didn't realize the landing is another step up. So I did one of these jobs. You ever see Dick Van Dyke, anybody fall over the couch? I did one of those jobs. But I did it so graciously. I looked like a ballerina as I was falling. <laughs> I hit and I turned. And it was like slow motion. I fell down. I fell down and I was cradled down. And I didn't get hurt at all. And my wife who was sleeping and my daughter and the kids who were sleeping, guess what? I went, ah, like that. And guess how much help I got? <laughs> Nothing! You see... You see, though he fall. <laughs> see, that was one of the inspirations behind the sermon, by the way. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Though he fall, look, look, he shall not be utterly cast down. Utter, I wasn't utterly cast down. I was just maybe fell, all right? For the Lord, what? Upholdeth him with his hand. Why? Because the steps of the righteous have been ordered by God, by the Lord. And underneath are his everlasting arms. Will you say it? I am in his hands. I am in his hands. Nice. Tiffany, it's time for the next lesson. I know you're going to say, this is a scriptural lesson. Wait till we get to the sermon. I should be done by three or four, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A man's heart devises his way. Now, I want you to understand something. In the primitive world, uh, the heart was the seat of emotions and intellect and everything. The brain ran the functions. But people believe the heart. That's why we have hearts. You know, I had a, I had a beautiful thing somebody gave me on Tuesday. Um, it was Kim. Do you know Kim? Kim? You maybe know Kim, right? She gave me because she missed me, right? Well she, well, she gave it to the whole worship team. What am I talking about, right? <laughs> But she gave me a present, and you know what it said? It said, it, it said, with a heart, she said, I missed you. She said, and I looked in the bag, and there were all kinds of candies and everything. And I was excited. She said, I did have pretzels, but I stole them. <laughs> so yesterday when I come home, guess what I found in my, uh, on the front door of my house? A bag of pretzels, all right? <laughs> now, I don't know why I said all that. Oh, here it is. A man's heart, how he thinks, his emotions, his, his, everything that's in him. A man's heart deviseth his way. He schemes and plans. And to devise means literally to weave. He weaves his life, has a strategy for life. And I love that expression. Have you ever heard it? Man has plans and God laughs. Have you ever heard of that one? Because guess what? A man's heart divides his way. But listen, but the Lord, there's a big but there. Well, that didn't sound so good. But look, but the Lord directeth his steps. We plan, we do all this stuff, but the Lord directs his steps. You say hallelujah. hallelujah. I directed my steps and I got more problems than I care to think about. So you may think you're directing your steps. You may think you came to worship today. But I tell you, God directed your steps. And you are here for a reason today. Amen, Lord? <laughs> you're here for a reason and for a purpose. Next scripture, please. Now, Jeremiah, before I even get into it, Jeremiah is interested. Gee, tell me how much free will Jeremiah had. None. I formed you in the womb, Jeremiah, to be a prophet unto the nations. So Jeremiah can say this. Oh, Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. Tony, it's not in you. Jim, it's not in you. Matt, it's not in you. You may think it is, but it's not in you. Listen. 
It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. It's rhetorical. You know whose, whose job it is? God's job. You may think. I'm going to use this illustration. Did you ever have that where you have something come in your head right in the middle of a sentence? I have that a lot lately, all right? But I want you to think about this. This would be a good illustration. Came to me, right? You're in the woods, and you're following the green, you know, the green trail. You see that tree's green? I guess I'll walk over there. Green, I guess I'll walk over there. Green, I guess I'll walk over there. And all of a sudden, you keep walking, and guess what? There's no green. And you're in the middle of the woods, and it's 430. And it's getting dark. And you have absolutely no idea which way to go. You are completely lost. And all of a sudden, I see Matt with the ranger hat on. And Matt comes up to me and says, Don, I got you covered. I got your back. And he takes me back to where I was. You see, I didn't have it in myself. I needed someone else. What is the function of the Holy Spirit, Tony? We like to talk about this. To guide, to guide you, to lead you. You be your advocate. Holy Spirit, come. That's what the Holy Spirit does in a Christian's life. He guides them because they were once were lost and now they're what? Found. You know something? I look back at my life, I don't think I can take credit for anything. I really don't. You know why? Because God directs and he orders the steps of the righteous. And I haven't always been righteous, but you know what? God had a plan for me before I was ever born. God has a plan for me before I was ever born. And I'm telling you right now, it's not just me. I believe in the priesthood of all believers, brother. And every single one of you, God has a plan for your life. You may not understand it. It may be difficult. It may be hard. It may involve, well, we'll talk about this later. But it may even involve suffering. It may even involve tragedy. Because the Lord God, our Heavenly Father, orders our steps. And sometimes he puts us on the mountaintop. And sometimes we experience bliss in our lives. I can't tell you how many people I've seen on fire for Christ and the Holy Spirit came in, and, 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 but I believe this, and forgive me, everyone, forgive me if I say this. I don't have the theodicy question answer of why do bad things happen to good people. I, have, I don't know. And when I get there, look, and, when, and I, this is what I recommend to you. When you get there, sit at Jesus' feet, but make sure you're in when you ask the question. Make sure you're in. And when you do, you know what? When you've been there 10,000 years, you won't care about the answer. Because 10,000 years is a drop in the bucket compared to the Lord. Eternal. The way of man is not in himself. It is not in a man that walketh to the direct his steps. I want you to put on the next scripture lesson, okay? I'm so far off my notes, I don't care. Okay? Yep, go ahead. Now, you might think, well, you know, God would never lead us to a place of, of tribulation and maybe even suffering. <laughs> Wrong answer. You say to me, but I don't understand. Well, let me tell you. How was it? How did it go for Peter? He was crucified upside down, according to tradition. How did it go for Paul? Well, he was beheaded in Rome. How did it go for the first century Christians? Well, they were accused of a fire, and they were also accused of eating blood and drinking blood and eating flesh. And they were, they were Appian Way, I guess, was loaded with, with crucifixions. How did it go? Tell me Christians don't suffer. I've had people tell me my life was going great till I became a Christian. I One thing happened to another that hurt. There was tribulation. I don't have a answer for you. I can tell you this from my own experience. I don't like to do too many things from my own experience, but I'm going to do this now. When I was a football player, I mentioned this to the gym of the other day. Uh, as a football player, 
I had all kinds of dreams of being a pro football player. I had all kinds of dreams of being playing for the Giants, the New York Giants. Any Giants fans here, by the way? No. Okay, nice talking to you. Anyway, now move. Ah, there. Thank you very much, Vinny. All right. Look, look, look. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Okay, I wanted to play for the Giants. I was a running back at NC State. I was on fire. I was playing before 55,000 people on a Saturday. I was a running back, the starting running back, a kickoff return. Guess what happened? Right in the middle of my, my career. Guess what happened? This is so exciting, everybody. I took a kickoff return and devastated my knee. How many years do you know I said, well, God did that. <laughs> you know what I was going to do, God? I was going to make a lot of money. And I was going to tithe. And I was going to give all my money. I was going to give a lot of my money to the church. But guess what? <laughs> Just guess what? You know what the greatest thing, one of the greatest things that ever happened to me is a knee injury. I know that's tough. And I know there are people here who've lost loved ones. Fathers, mothers, children, people in war, I know it. I know this is not easy. I don't have the answers, but I do have this, I do have this answer. In the worst of times, God is with you. Not only in the good times, because in the good times you can forget God just like that, but God is with you in the worst of times. When you can't handle it anymore, you hang on to the robe of Jesus. Hang on to him. Hang on to his legs. And you will find that nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Nothing. My brothers and sisters, God has a plan for your life. He has ordered your steps. Your life is not a coincidence. It's not a series of accidents like you're blowing in the breeze. Oh, no. Your life has been planned. And you know what? I, I, I think about this all the time. I, my wife, when I met my wife, I, I, I know I'm sharing a lot of personal stuff, but please forgive me. I was dating the head cheerleader <laughs> my senior year. And I drove my car into the driveway, and I opened the door, and then I looked, and I saw those tandem bikes. Is it tandem? Bicycle built for two, you know, ten. And on the back of this tandem bike was this beautiful woman with long hair. Is she, is she here right now? Oh, no, she's with the kids. Oh, this is good. Okay, now. <laughs> now, look, and I saw her hair, and, and, and she had knee socks on, and she was pedaling the bike, and she couldn't steer because, you know, she's just holding on. But I knew the person in the front, Janice Johnson. And by the way, I went to Janice Johnson. I said, who was that girl in the back? of the? But I saw her Monday in, 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 in uh, school. Who was that girl? So that's Gail Miller. That's Donna's sister. I said, oh, really? I went to Donna, and I said to Donna, I'm going to date your sister. And you know what she said? No. <laughs> Absolutely no. You're not, it's not going to happen. But God had a better plan, did he not? <laughs> the steps of the righteous have been ordered by God. Is that not correct? But think about this. If she came by that road a minute later or a minute earlier, or I'd come a minute late or a minute earlier, I would have probably never seen the love of my life. But you know what? God meticulously planned it. The Janice Johnson turned on the Murray Street at the exact time that I'm getting out of my car. Let me tell you something, what this does for you. You know what it does for you when you understand that your wife or your husband has been ordered for you? Do you know what it does? It gives you security. When you know that God ordains your steps, you're not afraid anymore. Because underneath are his everlasting arms, and you are in his hands, that you can walk like this now with peace. I'm not afraid. God's ordering my steps. You can walk like this with courage. God's ordering my steps. You can walk like this with forgiveness and love, and God is going to lead you to your friends, to your foes, to everyone. You know, Jesus said, love your enemies, not just your friends. And you know what? You're going to find in life that God has everything under control, that he's sovereign. His providential care is with you. Don't be afraid, because 
fear tries to devastate faith. Be not afraid. How many times have you heard that in scriptures? That God has a plan for everyone of you. I can't answer the question of why does evil happen? Why does bad happen? I don't know. But I can tell you this. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for that knee injury. Because I was so full of myself, I couldn't even stand myself. But you know what? When I'm boxing Big Macs at McDonald's, over the counter, when my career ended, I heard a voice that said, you will be serving me. And I said, but I'm a, a rough jock. I'm a tough guy. I'm a football player. I don't want nothing to do with ministry. <laughs> Try saying no to God someday. <laughs> because he knocked my socks off. And next thing you know, I said to my lovely wife, who I love so much, God, I believe that, I mean, uh, Gail, well, that's a, that's a little friendly. <laughs> I see a lot of women going, yeah, that's right. No, 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 no. But I said, honey, God has called me into the ministry. And this is what she said. She went like this. <laughs> she swallowed big. And basically said, what God calls you to do is what God calls you to do. Look, I believe this. I, I know there's loopholes in my theology. You may find them. That's fine. But I can tell you this. I want you to be happy. I want you to find peace. I want you to find courage in your walk. You will never walk with a sense of confidence. You'll never walk with a sense of confidence if you don't have a walk of faith that believes that you are in the hands of God. So stop being afraid, and live life abundantly. Live life abundantly in Jesus Christ. Now, is life, is life is just, are we like on a breeze? You know, just on a breeze? Or, or does life have a destiny? Brothers and sisters, it says in your word, whether you want to acknowledge it or not, God has a destiny for you, and your destiny is heaven itself. Amen. That's where you're going. You know why? Because Jesus' is destiny, written in glory a trillion years before the oceans ever rolled, God's destiny, your, his destiny, Jesus' destiny was to die on a cross and to provide for you a home in heaven. You see, the steps of the righteous are not only ordered for us, but God the Father ordered the Son's steps as well. And we, brothers and sisters, are the benefactors. When you, when you leave this place today, don't leave with fear. And if you leave this place today and you don't know Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you're making a big mistake because you think the hound of heaven is going to say all of a sudden, I don't want anything to do with him anymore. I tried that route. It doesn't work because the hound of heaven is going to keep knocking on your door until you finally acknowledge him and finally receive his son as your Lord and Savior. After this service, after the last hymn, there's going to be Jim and, 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 and Tony and there will be people who are going to pray for you. But maybe I'm going to, before I close, I want to give you one more scripture, and I promise this is my final one. But this is a goodie, and it's from the Master. Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Few there be that will find it. Which path, which gate, which gate are you walking through? Are you walking through the wide gate? Are you walking through the narrow gate? But if Jesus says, follow me, and he'll hold your hand, and he'll take you down the narrow way. Oh, there'll be bumps, and there'll be valleys, and there'll be hills. But he'll hold your hand, 
and he'll always be with you, even unto eternity. Amen? Amen. Let us pray, everyone. Loving and gracious God, we are thankful today that our steps have been ordered by you, that life is not a series of coincidences, that you, O oh God, are sovereign, that you, O oh God, are providential. You know all about us. So grant unto us, O oh Lord God, a faith that believes that our steps have been ordered and that we need not be afraid. And they've been ordered by you. These things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever, world without end. And all God's children said, amen. amen. This time I'm going to ask Tony and Jim and uh, whoever else, uh, Carol, whoever else wants to pray. But if somebody, if you want to renew your life, you want to renew your heart, you want, a, you want a spiritual renewal, you come down here. You can be on your knees, you come down here. You want to be in the front pew here, you come down. If you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, trust me, everyone, I'll be here after that, and we got people that will lead you to Christ. Don't leave this world without him. He's got a plan for your life. And all God's children said, amen. Worship team, come on up.
dominion and authority and all God's children said amen. amen if you need to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior don't leave this church without making a commitment to Jesus Christ may God be with you go in peace and go knowing that your steps have been ordered by the almighty God amen